Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica, famous laxative, and Minute Rubs, modern <laughs> chest rubs, brings you Duffy's. <laughs> Duffy's, where the elite meet the eat, Archie, the manager's bacon. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Uh, tonight, uh, Peter Laurie and Mrs. Corbett Wells in a talking bird. Huh? Mrs. Wells, talking bird. Now, don't get excited, Duffy. It ain't Orson. <laughs> now, this bird you can shut up once in a while. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you ought to see the bird, Duffy. It's wonderful. He talks, he whistles, uh, he even sings. Huh? Well, you ought to see him. He's, uh, he's practically human. Huh? Uh, uh, 4F. <laughs> hey, he's got flat feet. Huh? Well, uh, they call him a minor bird. He comes from the Malay Peninsula. Yeah, where the malarians come from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mrs. Wells found him in the jungle, you know, when he was, uh, just a little puppy. Huh? Well, what do you call a small bird? A gosling. <laughs> a gosling. Duffy, you kill me. A gosling is a Norwegian trader. <laughs> hey, certainly. I'll call you back, Duffy. Go on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Duffy's. Come in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the Waiter, Miss Duffy, Johnny Johnston, Paul Weston and his orchestra, our special guests tonight, Peter Laurie and Mrs. Carveth Wells' minor bird, Raffles, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Uh, Harry, uh, don't forget the announcement about the book, Duffy's First Reader. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll make it now. Yeah, uh, orchestra, uh, fram frap, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Harry. Yes. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, ever since Duffy's has been on the air, people have been asking why Archie hasn't written a book. Well, finally, it's happened. It has been written by the great genius. Ah, uh, Harry, please. <laughs> Folks, he means it has been wrote. <laughs> Monzel, watch your diction. Yes, excuse me. Yes, yeah, Archie has really wrote a unique book. <laughs> it is called Duffy's First Reader, and there are chapters on mathematics, etiquette, history, and grammar. Not to mention me autobiography. <laughs> That's right. And Duffy's first reader is profusely illustrated. Uh, and uh, Harry, tell him it's got pictures, too. <laughs> yes, uh, pictures not only of Archie, but of the famous personalities who have visited Duffy's in the past. Forty-eight pages of pictures and laughs. And all it will cost you, ladies and gentlemen, is the cost of postage and handling. In round numbers, ten cents. That's all. Simply send your dime, no stamps, please, to Duffy's first reader, post office box 67, New York City, New York. Hey, well, Miss Archie, now, did this talking bird, what do they call it? Uh, they call it a, <clears throat> a minor bird. Why do they call it a minor bird? Well, Eddie, that is difficult for me to explain to one unfamiliar with the natural habitudes of botanology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know, huh? <laughs> Look, Eddie, I never talked on a subject of which I am ignorant. Not that quiet. Nobody could be. <laughs> Tell me, wh why do they call it a minor bird? Because it's a bird that ain't 21 years old. <laughs> what do they call the bird after it becomes 21? Uh, nothing. They die at 20. <laughs> uh, would you like any more information, Eddie? Yeah, keep it flying. <laughs> well, where'd you get all this stuff? Well, don't forget, Eddie, that for a long time I was associated with the Explorers Club. As a busboy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Made in the water, they call me. Uh, naturally, uh, working in an Explorers Club, it makes one practically an explorer oneself. Mm. Well, I was a, a waiter at the Stalk Club for two years. I ain't never had a baby. <laughs> well, what did this bird look like? Why does it look like? It looks like uh, sort of one of them uh, molted falcons. <laughs> Only darker. Mm. More of a chocolate malted falcon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, say, Archie. Oh, yeah, Miss Duffy. Uh, who did you say was coming down here tonight? Uh, Peter Laurie and a talking bird. Hmm. A fine choice they give me. <laughs> What's wrong with Laurie? After all, he has all the requirements you demand. He's a man. <laughs> He's 
too short. I never go out with small men. It ain't sportsmanlike. Well, he's short, but he's tricky. Uh, anyway, uh, what's wrong with short guys? Your own father is shorter than your mother, ain't he? Well, they were the same height when they were married. Yeah, well, I guess all that banging on the head has dwarfed him a bit. <laughs> Uh, look, uh, Miss Duffy, can't you think of anything but men? Sure I can, but why should I punish myself? <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Say, Archie. Uh, yeah, Harry, uh... Mrs. Carveth Wells is here with the bird. Oh, well, uh, good evening, Mrs. Wells. We are indeed grafted by your humble presence here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Archie. Uh, speaking of jungles, uh, you know I'm an old-time hunter myself. You are? Uh, yeah, many's the time I hunted elephants, lions, tigers... <laughs> Hyenas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eddie over there used to be me safari. Uh, priceless, Eddie. Many's the time he has trekked me out of the jungle. Which jungle? Uh, which, uh, uh well, what was the name of that one again, Eddie? Uh, I'm sorry, this is the one you gotta trek yourself out of. <laughs> mm, well, anyways, as I was saying... Archie, uh, can't we hear the bird talk for a change? Uh, Say, that is a very good idea. How about it, Mrs. Wells? All right, I'll take Raffles out of his cage. Huh. Glad to hear a bird talk to me. <laughs> is that the bird doing that? Raffles, whistle your favorite tune. Whistle your favorite tune. Whistle your favorite tune. Whistle. Whistle your favorite tune. Better throw him a grape. Yeah. Whistle your favorite tune. Whistle. <laughs> now whistle huh? my country tis of thee, Raffles Whistle my country tis of thee, whistle My country tis of thee, whistle <laughs> Now Raffles, you're gonna whistle You're gonna whistle heel heel the gang's all here Heel heel, whistle heel heel <laughs> Whistle, whistle, whistle really the song you like best Whistle your favorite tune now, whistle your favorite tune. Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. Now, what, what did... You, Raffles, you're going to whistle your favorite tune again? All right. When you saw Duffy's picture, did you lie? Uh -huh. Raffles, did you, you... What do you say to this pretty girl? Yeah, darling. Uh, likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> when you saw Duffy's picture, did you laugh? Did you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> now, Raffles... That's a very bright your, bird. <laughs> whistle your favorite tune. Whistle your favorite tune. Whistle your favorite tune. <laughs> well, that's fine, Raffles, but you're going to say hello, Jojo? Going to say hello, Jojo? Say hello, Jojo. Hello, Jojo. Now, <laughs> now Raffles, change your voice. Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> now, Raffles. Hello, Jojo. I know that you have a tune you like best of all. Jojo. How about whistling the tune that you like best of all? Whistle, whistle, whistle. Whistle, <laughs> 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 Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Duffy. Uh, uh, well, yeah, the bird's here. Well, uh, don't worry, Duffy, don't worry. I'm watching him. Yeah, besides... Uh... <laughs> Anyhow, I got me hat on. <laughs> huh? What? No, Duffy, you're wrong. No, Duffy, it was not. <laughs> nah. I thought it was Gabriel Heater. <laughs> Well, gee, Mrs. Wells, that was wonderful. Ain't there nothing this uh, feathered quiz kid can't do? Well, Raffles can't give you advice. He can't, huh? Well, touche. We got a bird that can. Give one, Sal. <laughs> gladly, gladly, Archie. Ladies and gentlemen, one of these days you may wake up in the morning with that dull, headachey feeling that comes from the need of a laxative. And if it's a crowded day or if you have special plans, you may be inclined to put off taking that laxative till bedtime, even though it means you'll continue to feel under the weather. Well, now that's not necessary. Simply take Sal Hepatica right away. For then Sal Hepatica brings gentle, speedy relief. In fact, usually within an hour. So you can see you don't have to wait till night to take the laxative needed in the morning. And don't have to go through the whole day feeling out of sorts. And this famous saline has an additional advantage. Sparkling Sal Hepatica also helps sweeten an upset stomach by helping to reduce excess gastric acidity. So tonight, or first thing tomorrow, get Sal Hepatica from your druggist. Remembering this, caution use only as directed. Then any time you need a laxative, whether morning, noon, or night, see if you don't feel better faster when you take gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Hello, Archie. 
Oh, hello, Johnson. Uh, look, uh, Johnny, I've been meaning to apologize to you. You know, I've been a little rough on you the last couple of weeks, and I want you to know that I really think you're a great singer. Oh, okay, bud. Now, look, about this bird. It happens that, uh, you know, I'm the singer around here, and I don't like to see a bird cutting in on my racket. Look, Johnson, it may be news to you, but them birds was in the singing racket long before you was. <laughs> well, I want you to know that I'm not taking second billing to a crow. Johnson, what is your song tonight? Sunday, Monday, or always. Sunday, Monday, or always. I notice you left out payday. <laughs> Johnson, sing. You were very wise leaving out that payday. <laughs> Won't you tell me when we will meet again? Sunday, Monday, or always. If you're satisfied, I'll be at your side. Sunday, Monday, or always. No need to tell me now what makes the world go round. When at the sight of you, my heart begins to pound and pound. And what am I to do? Can't I be with you? Sunday, Monday, or always. Like we do. Oh, that's all right, Arch. I'm like a rug, you know. I'm I'm better after a good beating. <laughs> Why do I try to get friendly with this guy? Uh, uh, hi, Arch. Well, Finnegan, you're late. Uh, you missed the talking bird. Uh, so what? We had chicken for dinner. But you should have been here, Finnegan. This uh, bird really talked words, you know. Duh? Yeah. Duh. Well, uh, duh. tell me briefly, what did he say? <laughs> Well, uh, he said uh, lots of things like uh, take a bit, uh, hello, Jojo, or Rebecca, uh, hello, Jojo. It uh, sounds like a moron to me. <laughs> hey, dude, where does this boy come from, Marge? Well, he's the offspring of Mrs. Convert Wells, the explorer. <laughs> oh, dude, I know quite a number of offspring explorers. <laughs> uh, Benny, and stop lying. What explorers do you know? Oh, dude, Dr. Presume. Dr. Presume? Yeah, Dr. Livingston, I presume. <laughs> and, and the man's name was Stanley, I presume. Miss <laughs> Arthur? Miss What's the matter, Eddie? Ooh, look here. The man has been sitting over in that corner. You know who he is? Who? Mr. Peter? What? <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> Well, Mr. Lorry, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you make the rest of the gang here look less gruesome. 
Uh, please, Archie, I don't... I, I don't want you to think of me as a horrible person. Oh, all right, I'll try not to, then. Uh, no, uh, please, think of me as a sweet, lovable man who, who makes certain people faint. Uh, sort of non-musical Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Sort of a Frankenstein actor. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't scare me, you know. I work for a guy who makes you look like little orphan Annie. Who is that? Guy named Duffy. He's half ape. What is the other half? What? What is the other half? Ape. <laughs> you should see him. He stands uh, five feet six, sitting down on his stocking feet and has a neck that starts at his waist. Yeah, the guy's all shoulders. In fact, when he buys a suit, he only buys the coat. Well, what does he do with the pants? His wife wears them. Oh, he sounds like a monstrosity. Yes, well, fella. <laughs> and he, he loves your pictures, you know. He's always so happy at the finish when you finally get the ghoul. Oh, Archie, I'm very tired of that sort of picture. Well, what are you going to do? Well, you know, I've been offered a radio program where I can be something different, entirely different. <laughs> a children's hour. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a natural for you, yeah. Good evening, kiddies. This is your Uncle Jack, the Ripper. <laughs> I'm serious, Archie. I've always loved little children, and I'm going to write this program for them myself. Oh, it's lovely. The first story, you know, is about a little boy and girl. Little boy and girl, huh? Yes, a little boy and girl, and, and, and they are late for dinner because on their way home from school, they have fallen into a concrete mixer. <laughs> Oh, the joys of childhood. <laughs> uh, where is their parents? Well, their parents would have been there, but, but they were strolling down a country lane and got their heads cut off by a windmill. <laughs> this will certainly get the kiddies to take their milk. I think so, too, yes. You see, so the police tried to find their uncle, but uncle is busy in the backyard having a barbecue. And, and what do you think is uncle barbecuing, huh? Auntie. <laughs> oh, you read the story. Well, it uh, sounds pretty good, uh, Peter. Uh, maybe you can get some plasma company to sponsor it. <laughs> but I like it. Uh... Uh, um, Archie, uh, do you mind introducing me? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lorry. This is Miss Duffy, the daughter of the establishment. Uh... Uh, you know, Mr. Lorry, you're even less repulsive in person as you are on the screen. Thank you. I've never seen you on a screen, so I can't return a compliment. Thank you. Uh, can I ask you a personal question? Uh, yes, what is it? Do girls go out with you? Well, once in a while. How do they explain you to their folks? <laughs> They usually say, uh, Mama, see what I'll marry if you don't let me go out with Joe? Well, Mr. Lorry, don't feel too bad. Remember, any girl who would go out with you isn't worth having anyhow. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, I don't want to break up this courtship, but uh, <clears throat> why don't you show Mr. Lorry around the joint, uh, entertain him? Uh, maybe I'll sing to him. That kind of horror even he couldn't stand. <laughs> Listen, take them over and show them the bird. Uh, leave them amaze each other. Okay, uh, come on, Mr. Lorry. Hey, Mr. Archer? Yeah, Eddie? Crime on the premises. Crime? What happened? Somebody has stole a sandwich. <laughs> Perish forbid. <laughs> From where? From the free hors d'oeuvres counter. <laughs> but I just put up a sign. Free hors d'oeuvres. Do not touch. <laughs> what a rat. Swiping a sandwich marked free hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Even a cop wouldn't do that. <laughs> What's the matter, Archie? Well, Fonzel, we got to conduct an investigation. You know, a, a CX, a cross-examination. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be very happy to tell you all I know. Uh, about the sandwiches? No, about Minute Rub. Listen, Fonzel, will you please tell me how Minute Rub fits in here? Well, in the first place, Minute Rub is one of the two fine products that make it possible for our listeners to hear Duffy's. And in the second place, if any of those listeners are suffering from aggravating cold symptoms, their noses are stuffed up and that they have that aching feeling in their muscles, Minute Rub fits in perfectly. Simply do this, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourself some Minute Rub, modern chest rub, right away, and massage it briskly on your back and chest. That's all you do. Then even before you finish, you'll feel a gratifying sensation of warmth as Minute Rub gets to work. 
begins to soothe the discomfort and tightness caused by your cold. And Minute Rub, at the same time, gives off active menthol vapors that help relieve that congested feeling in your nose and throat. Nationally famous Minute Rub is greaseless and it's stainless, too. Seems to disappear as you rub it on. So get after those annoying cold symptoms with this modern chest rub that takes only a minute to use. Only a minute to start bringing welcome relief. Minute Rub. That brings us up to date in the case of the missing salami. Yeah. We gotta find a crook now. Are you willing to take the case? Uh, frankly, Archie, it doesn't quite intrigue me. Well, why not? Well, you see, in the movies, the scene is usually more gruesome. You know, bodies on the floor and... Bodies on the floor? Huh? Uh, Finnegan. Uh, uh, <laughs> Finnegan, uh, lay down. Oh, that's too gruesome. <laughs> Uh, too gruesome, huh? Uh, you better lay face down, Finnegan. <clears throat> now, uh, leave us start the cross-examination and, uh, grill some of these rats. And, uh, Mr. Lowry, out of courtesy to you as our guest, I think you're the first rat we should grill. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Okay, uh, Lowry, now come clean. Where was you on the night of tonight? Well, I came down here to Duffy's. For what reason? Well, I was out of my mind. <laughs> out of your mind, huh? The logical man to eat the sandwich. Penny, please, this is a criminal investigation. It sure is. It sure is. Uh, now, my dear Mr. Lowry, uh, can you explain the location of your whereabouts during the misdemeanor of the sandwich? Well, when, uh, when the sandwich was stolen, I was sitting on that chair next to the free hors d'oeuvre counter listening to the birds sing songs. Sitting next to the counter listening to the bird, huh? Yeah. But as you see, when I sit in this chair, I cannot possibly reach up to the sandwiches. Hmm. Well, that eliminates you. Uh, <clears throat> next witness. Uh, me? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, just call me Mr. D.A. Uh, <laughs> take the stand, please, uh, for the third degree. Oh, oh, let me do this, Archie, please. Uh, Miss Duffy, where were you born? At 223 and a half, 3rd Avenue, six blocks from the Navy Yard. He just asked you for your birthplace, not your hobby. <laughs> now, uh, Miss Duffy, were you ever convicted of a crime? Oh, uh, just once, a minor traffic violation. And what was the violation? Necking on an intersection. <laughs> Is that illegal? Yeah, we weren't in a car. <laughs> Corpses is huh? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, proceed, uh, prosecution. Uh, the prosecution rests and, and needs it. Hmm. Well, if we only had some clothes, Eddie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Eddie, take the stand. Say, oh, yes, three times. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Okay, the court is now in season. <laughs> Eddie, do you recall the exact day that the uh, salami sandwich was made up? I think it was Labor Day. Uh, yeah, yeah. My must have been Labor Day because the previous Easter, everybody said, these sandwiches must be left over from Christmas. 
What year was that? <laughs> well, I remember Roosevelt had just been elected. <laughs> yes. And everybody said, Teddy's going to make a wonderful president. <laughs> Well, thank you, Eddie. Uh, Next uh, witness, Clifton Finnegan. Now, tell me, Finnegan, did you steal the sandwich? Dutch, I got a lullaby. (laughs) You mean an alibi? Uh, No, a lullaby. I was asleep in a chair. Hmm. Well, that dismembers you, Finnegan. (laughs) Laurie, I'm strumped. (laughs) Well, there's only one thing left to do. Cherche la femme. Huh? Cherche la femme. Find a woman. Uh, no, Laurie, leave, leave us get the case solved first. <laughs> Never can tell about these little guys. <laughs> hey, Archie, I have an idea. What about that lady, you know, the bird that whistles the Star Spangled Banner? The Star Spangled Banner? Europa. The case is solved. Uh, who done it, Arch? Just a second. Mr. Laurie, your alibi was that you were sitting down and so couldn't reach the sandwich. Yes. Mr. Laurie, are you or are you ain't a uh, patriotic citizen? I am. When the bird whistled the Star Spangled Banner, what did you do? What? Uh... I'll tell you, you stood up and stole a sandwich. <laughs> Peter Laurie, you're guilty. Justice has Trump. <laughs> the case of the stolen salami is solved. <laughs> It's time to leave Duffy's for the evening, but let's all meet here again next week when our guest will be Ida Lupino. And remember to obtain your copy of Duffy's First Reader. Address your requests to Duffy's First Reader, Post Office Box 67, New York City. Send one dime to cover cost of handling. No stamps will be accepted. That's Post Office Box 67, New York City. In the meantime, if you have a cold... Remember Minitrub. If you need a laxative... Remember Salopalica. And if you have a half hour next Tuesday evening at the same time, remember... Uh, Duffy's where the elite meet the Archie speaking. Well, Duffy, uh, yeah, that's right. Next week, I will Lupino. I'm going to ask you to help me get uh, Duffy's first reader uh, scenarioized for the movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, Duffy, uh, by the way, have you sent the way for the book? Well, why don't you? It's only a dime. Well, send in a dime to Duffy's First Reader, uh, Post Office Box uh, 67, New York City. Huh? You'd rather wait for it comes out in a cheaper edition. <laughs> okay, good night, Duffy. <laughs> program came to you from Hollywood. This is the Blue Network. <laughs>